welcome to Ask the Pediatricians Live. Um, today we'll be having our dear consultant pediatrician, Dr. Bemi Sola Boyidi. My name is Vera James, and I'll be moderating today's discussion on infant nutrition. Dr. Boyidi, you're welcome to the studio. Yeah, good morning, Vera. Good morning, Ask the Pediatricians. Uh, we are welcome. How are Thanks you today? Pleasure to be here this morning. I'm good. It's a beautiful okay, day. Good to have Thank you. you. Um, very briefly, we we'll would um, go into what we are here for today. But before then, we'll have a little commercial. Please, please. For nearly 20 years, Afravite has been my family's choice of multivitamin supplement for the children. When I was a young girl, my mother gave me Afravite because it's rich in vitamins crucial in the growth of children and for their daily vitality. Afrovite now comes in a new pack but retains the same goodness that helps to keep the family strong and healthy. Afrovite, available in syrup and drops for daily vitality. Afrovite is made... Okay, um, welcome back everyone. So, um, Dr. Bim Boyede, you'll be talking to us this morning on infant nutrition. I'd like you to do something before you start. Please let's understand what do we mean by, or what do you pediatricians mean by the word infant? Because um, over, over the years as an ATP moderator, we find issues with who the neonate is, or the infant is, or the toddler is, or the baby is, or the child is. So please clarify that before you tell us what infant nutrition is about. All right, thank you so much, Vera. Uh, infant, strictly speaking, is any child between the ages of one month to one year. But this morning, we're going to really use it very loosely because we're going to be talking about nutrition in the first two years of life. So if you want to be very technical, politically correct, you can talk about <coughs> newborn, infants and young child nutrition but you know that's quite a mouthful so but uh infant nutrition basically we're going to be talking about nutrition from day one of life to the first two years because those are the most crucial period uh when we are talking about nutrition in children and that is when most mothers have issues yeah okay um would want you to um, just tell us what, give an overview of what we mean by infant nutrition. Nutrition in one sense, food, um, what kind of food you want children to eat and all that. Before we go into the questions, because I'm sure uh, um, viewers will have loads of questions for you this morning, because this is one topic that we keep hearing and hearing and ask the pediatricians. So what do you really have for us? Give us an overview, an introductory message. Okay, uh, thank you, Vera. Uh, the reason why we are having this discussion, because uh, thank God for Facebook group, thank you for asking pediatrician. We get loads and loads of questions daily. And recently, Facebook has given us the opportunity to categorize top, uh, posts on that topics. And what I found is that the most frequently asked questions, the topic that tends to come up all the time is the issue of complementary feeding. Uh, somehow mothers are guessing it now when it comes to exclusive breastfeeding and all that. But majority struggle from you know that period of after six months of exclusive breastfeeding was the next thing to do. And then you see babies that have been doing so beautifully well on exclusive breastfeeding, they begin to have a lot of issues. And that is why uh, it is one of the most frequently asked questions on active pediatrician Facebook group. And that's why we didn't it fit to, okay, let's talk about it. We've always shared several, we've had a group discussion on the topic. We've written some, we've shared so many articles with books, stuff, but I still find that majority of mothers are still struggling with this aspect of uh, their child nutrition. So we said that let's talk about it. Let's mothers know what to do. What are the issues they have? Like I always make a joke. Those are those are the most frequently asked questions any pediatrician is going to be asked throughout your lifetime. 
uh, my, my the mother is just going to come to me my child is not eating that's the standard <laughs> question and they expect you to give them like a magical wand or a medication or a particular thing that wants to wave it on the child or wants to give the child that medication the child will start eating like a pro you know and so mothers are always disappointed when their children are not eating and it gives them a lot of anxiety it makes them worry a lot and so that's why this time around we think we should address the topic yeah okay um thank you so much Dr. Bimisola, for that and um, just like you've said your, per your mothers really want you to give them the magic wand because the first question i have here from na Adli says my 11 month old daughter has refused to eat our weight is not encouraging so dr baby please give us the magic wand what should she do yeah but vera before we go into the question i will want to for for give some overview kind of uh give general information for mothers so that if not we just keep repeating the same uh uh we keep answering the same questions over and over again so it's important that uh, we give a a, a short brief of uh, uh what um infant nutrition is generally all about okay so um okay thank you uh, first and foremost the first six months of life we are very clear that what every child needs to eat is breast milk and luckily for me as i was preparing for this uh uh atp life i found out that unicef and some other groups have come up with very beautiful videos because as sometimes i think mothers uh, struggles a lot with the um reading a lot of off and you're trying to explain things so then they don't get it so sometimes visual or the visual learning is always the best so we have a lot of very many videos that are just short videos about three to five minutes long i think yeah. the longest is about seven minutes stop that you can watch and that address all these various issues and i'm going to strongly recommend that every mother listening to me every uh, member of active nutrition group should go watch those videos and we have also created that unit in uh, our group now so you have the like unit courses if you like so there's a unit course on breastfeeding so you watch all the breastfeeding videos read all the articles and everything you become a pro on breastfeeding then there's wow. a unit course on all that i'm going to talk all i'm going to be talking about today infant nutrition what do you give your child how often do you feed your child uh how much do you give your child what are the kind of foods you can use how do you keep the food safe all those things have been broken down into short short videos so if you have not seen them just go to active nutrition facebook group click on the units part you will see units one breastfeeding you see unit two uh infant and young child nutrition okay so now back to the question so the first six months of life breastfeeding breast milk only no water no ago no juice no ribena nothing i like to emphasize this thing because a lot of mother tells me they are doing exclusive breastfeeding but they are giving water they are giving ribena that is no exclusive breastfeeding so it's only breast milk and nothing else but breast milk then after six months your baby needs to start eating other things but you need to still continue to breastfeed because that's another mistake mothers make. They think when you say, okay, baby is now six months, exclusive breastfeeding is over, I jump into other food and no more breast milk. No, you still need to keep breastfeeding and then you, in fact, you are going to breastfeed throughout the first two years of life we're talking about. Yeah, that's what we recommend. That's what we recommend. That's what everybody recommends. Oh. Yes, Vera. Then, but at that point, you need to now start adding other food. Are we clear on that? But we also need to clarify that when you start adding other food, remember that um, it's, it's a gradual process. You, you can't expect a six-month-old baby who has been on milk only, and the first day you give uh, a bowl of pap or something, the child should just finish it. So that's why I recommended those videos. <clears throat> yeah, so the first six months after that six months you're introducing it the first few days or weeks you're just going to feed that baby twice and maybe about three spoons of yes so you don't need to like 
make a hundred meals or two hundred meals, or, and and when your baby doesn't finish it, it only it, she only takes two or three spoons to say, ah, doctor, when my you baby's not eating, you know, and then you start panicking, then you throw away that one, you think it's because baby doesn't like that one, you try another one, you, and then you start getting frustrating, uh, frustrated, you start uh, also forcing the baby to feed. And then the baby also begins to dislike the as I mean feeding entirely. It should be something so enjoyable. Some it should not be stressful. Yes. So it is it's going to be gradually. Mother should understand that. And you can give your baby any food from six months. That's another thing mothers need to realize. It doesn't have to be pap. Is uh, most of my uh, listeners are Nigerian. So it's either we're doing pap or we're doing uh milk from the mm. shops or cereals that are inside the tins yes. you don't need to do that you can use this in your own kitchen and it, can, it doesn't have to be cereal only it can also be things like banana match fruits and things like that as long as it's soft food it does it has to be something the baby can easily swallow something soft something and of course you are still breastfeeding because there are still a lot of nutrients the baby need and you know which uh, when you are introducing new food, uh, initially you may not get everything from the new food because baby is also not going to be taking a lot of them. So that's why you still need to keep on breastfeeding. And the emphasis is on more breastfeeding and then you, I mean, not reducing the quantity of breast milk you are giving before, but gradually adding the new food. So that is why we talk about the first, when you first start, the first one or two weeks, three spoons twice a day is enough. Keep on breastfeeding. That will be fine. Then as the baby gets bigger, maybe by towards the end of the six months, you can now begin to make it about uh, three times a day, you know, of of the porridge or, you know, whatever food you are giving at this age, that would be soft, uh, uh, semi-solid, not big solid, but at the same time, not watery. Because that's another thing mothers do. We, we give... Uh, 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 pop, milk, or something, we put it into the bottle. And because we put it into the bottle so that it can flow out of the, and then it is so, it's so watery. You should, the way, if you watch those videos, they actually demonstrated it. It's a porridge that when you put it on the spoon, it should not drop. It should not flow out. It should not drop. You should be able to hold it on the spoon and it's not dropping. That is how you know that you have the right consistency and it should be with the spoon and the plates. And that is what you do. And then you gradually, and you are also giving healthy snacks. So three meals from six months to eight, eight months with one snack in between, healthy snack. You will see an example of healthy snacks in that video. And then by nine to 11 months, that is when babies start being finger feeding. So you are giving them food that they can hold in their hands. They can hold banana in their hands. They can hold a little bit of apple and things like that. And you are also increasing the quantity, maybe to like about so uh, three quarter now, and then maybe four times a day. You are still breastfeeding. And then by the time your baby is about one year, then you can make it uh two uh four to five times a day with the snacks, maybe two snacks this time around, and of course almost a full plate. So those are the things that mothers need to know. And when mothers keep asking me this question, they know my mantra. I always tell them patience and persistence. Mothers want to start a new food the first time and they want to try to finish a, a big bowl of it. And mothers are always worried that their baby is not eating enough. You see, their stomach is actually small. It, it, there's a limit to what it can hold. So if your baby has certain three spoons and it doesn't want to get that's just enough. You stop. Then you give other food, you can give your breast milk in between, maybe in another three, four hours, you, you can now give another food. They are not going to eat the same quantity like you. They are not going to eat uh, because you, your stomach is bigger. Okay? So uh, those are the initial uh, preliminary information I want to provide. Thank and then we will so now much. go on to an answer specific questions. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Boyde. This is... Um... I open yeah, I'm fun. sure you, our participants, our viewers are enjoying this already. So, um, viewers, please drop your questions live. Dr. Bimsola is here to answer them one after the other. Please make them brief so we would um, not have issues reading on the screen as a scroll. Thank you. And while we're waiting for those questions, we'll just take a, a commercial now. Thank you.
For nearly 20 years, Afravite has been my family's choice of multivitamin supplement for the children. When I was a young girl, my mother gave me Afravite because it's rich in vitamins crucial in the growth of children and for their daily vitality. Afrovite now comes in a new pack but retains the same goodness that helps to keep the family strong and healthy. Afrovite, available in syrup and drops for daily vitality. Afrovite is made by Afrochem Limited. Okay, welcome back. And um, please, viewers, I would love you to go to the Ask the Pediatricians page. Look, look through the live questions and begin to drop your questions there. Please don't drop your questions in the wrong place so we can see your questions live and Dr. Boyede will be ready to attend to them. All right, let's, uh, Dr. Boyede, let me just ask yeah. you a few questions that I have here um, already. Mm -hmm. If, okay, you said something about the transition period. And someone is, I mean, yeah. four questions have come in asking the same question. And then there's this myth that if I breastfeed my child exclusively, when it's time to give the child food, the child refuses to eat, no matter how much I try. You said something just now. You said um, take yeah. it in bits and all of that. But I don't know yeah. where this whole myth is from. I've heard this from different moms and different daddies, and even here on my um, question sheets. People are asking... I have experienced this with my first child, my second child, my third child. If I do exclusive breastfeeding, when it's time to transit, it's always an issue. However, if I feed them from, um, if I, if I mix feed them from birth, I usually don't have such issues. So please, how do you address this, Dr. Binsola? Okay, thank you very much, Vera. It's one of the most popular questions we get. And there's a lot of myths around babies being exclusive breastfed and then not wanting to eat. That is actually not true. Uh, it is a myth, as she said. The reason why mothers have that issue is that it's because of the way we go about uh, the technique of introducing new food. You know, I made mention of that. Most mothers think that when you're supposed to breastfed, then the next thing you just jump into the, I mean, the complementary food, the solid food, and reduce or stop breastfeeding and just or no tumor of the solid food and and because the baby was an exclusive breastfeeding you still want to suck and the baby even needs to suck anyway mm. so they were they are thinking baby should stop sucking so that baby can eat other food so they unconsciously or consciously are trying to reduce the frequency of breastfeeding so that they can give uh the solid and then they also want to give the solid immediately. I know I see some mothers telling me, if my baby is just six months, I've tried this, I've tried that. If your baby is just six months and you've already tried three or four different food, you are trying okay. too hard. Yeah. It is yeah. too early. That is, that's the mistake. And then such mothers get frustrated because they are forcing the baby to eat. Then the baby begins to develop uh, aversion for food, food aversion they don't, because if they see it as a stressful period, you come with this your big plates and spoon and it's like everybody is terrified. The baby doesn't like that. So then the baby was also like, okay, he's a bad so he's going to win now. So what we're saying basically is that when you are introducing new food, go slow and and lead. so it's a gradual process. Don't start with hundred minutes of pap on day one. The baby's not going to take it. And that is the truth. Keep on, don't reduce the frequency of your breastfeeding. Keep on breastfeeding, then in between the breast milk, you can give the new food and do it gradually. In the first one, the first week, two weeks, is only twice a day. And maybe two or three spoons is enough. That is okay. That is it. That's where the that's where the error starts from. And don't force your baby to eat. If your baby is it's a new thing. Somebody, the baby are like, what is this? I've been taking this milk. Which one is this new one? So you need to give the baby time. And I always say mothers, even you as an adult, you, you, I don't jump into new food so easily like that. I, I take my time. And I, I know some people are very adventurous. We are all different. Too, yeah. But <laughs> I'm not that very adventurous. So when I see something from... Chinese thing, it takes me time to adjust to them and all that because I'm a Nigerian, I'm used to eating my food. So that's the 
that is exactly the same thing for a baby. So you just imagine that that baby is from an uh, is in a is from another country where they take only breast milk. Now you are bringing her to Nigeria. You want that to eat jollof rice? Just after imagining that. So that's mm. what I would say. Yeah, mm. I can see a question. Yeah, like uh, if there's a question before this one. Uh, there's one about what are examples about of all these snaps. snaps? Yeah. yeah. So when we talk about LD snacks, thank you very much. Uh, that's Tommy Lola. Uh, LD snacks are basically things like fruits. So you can give things like banana, you can match it. Remember, uh, that's another thing I didn't mention. In the first six to eight months, the food has to really be mashing. So if you're giving banana, it has to be mashed. You can blend your fruits and make it like a uh, like smoothies kind of a thing those are other snacks you can give uh, oranges you can give all those kind of things they are snacks. but by the time it's turning nine to eleven months when they are becoming uh, the food the consistency needs to increase and then they can also hold it so as, as eleven nine to eleven months the baby can actually hold the banana in their hand you don't need to match it anymore they can hold you can cut a little bit of pieces of apple they can eat that as well those are what we mean by elder snacks in between not biscuits not juice not candy not all those are junk food and mistake most mothers also do is to give their babies lots of junk foods and then when the children like the sweet sugary salty junk food they don't want to eat the healthy food so and i keep mom i keep getting questions from mothers telling me oh my baby only wants to eat biscuits so and uh, see he doesn't want to eat any other thing that baby doesn't know there's anything called biscuits you are the first person that gave that child biscuits. If you never gave him or her biscuit, that child will never know there's anything called biscuits. And that is why it is very important that when we're introducing new food to our babies, we we'll give them healthy choices. We, we give healthy snacks. Lots of examples on the video, which are really uh, uh, um, advocating that we all watch. Not, not soda, not uh, all those things they sell in the shops, all those you know, I know we have a culture of, oh, everybody comes visiting them, they just buy those for them. It is wrong. Please, let's give them fruits. Let's give them veggies. Those are examples that are good for, for children to use. Thank you. Okay. Thank then you, the Dr. next Wendy. question then, I saw. The second yeah. question. person is asking how many cups yeah. of juice oh, can yeah. a child between four and eight years drink in a day? I'm sure you now, know. number one, when you say juice, the, the way I understand Nigerian juice is those one you sell in the store. It is not that it's not even advocated. But if you are talking about you making your own orange uh, juice in your own kitchen, I always like to say that. So you buy the fresh orange and you squeeze it. There's no problem. Let the child take as much as they want. You know, there's the amount of fluid they need to take. But I remember that the child is also going to drink water. The child is also going to eat other food. So I will not. I will say maybe once or twice a day. It's okay, and that can even count as an healthy snack if it is coming from uh, a fresh Homemade. fruits and things like that. Yeah, not the one you are selling the store concentrates, which is mostly sugar and you know water. So we don't advocate that children drink a lot of juice. You know, as much as possible, you, you want to go for healthy choices. Um, viewers, please oh, we, okay. uh, uh, line our questions yeah. to questions related to infant nutrition, please. Um, I just yeah. So we only now. take questions on nutrition, okay. yeah. Okay, we just yeah, have please, a, Rebecca, a ask break. questions on in nutrition, yeah. Okay, so we'll have a short break now um, for another commercial. Stay tuned. I want to be strong. I want to be smart. Drink it every time. Welcome back. Um, okay, Dr. Bwim Salaboyede, um, I have another question for you here. This person is asking, I'm sure this person is an ardent follow-up Ask the Pediatricians Foundation. She's saying, why can't yeah. I mix cereals for my child? I want yeah. to be strong. I want to be smart. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. So, madam. Asking, why can't I mix cereals for my child? Because, um, let me say, the average Nigerian parent would want to do the Guinea corn, white corn, and all of those kind of okay, things. Okay, okay, I, 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 I want to know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Who, was, who is that? So much for the question. Uh, let's start by saying number one. 
your baby can eat anything anything it doesn't have to be cereal alone I, I really want Nigerians especially to take that away because it's not everything complimentary for this part, but that is not true that is number one number two your baby can you you when you want to introduce food you make it progressive because babies can also react to certain food that is that's another principle principle three is that the food should come from different uh food classes or groups of food so we have what we call the grains so that is where all your pap your um your sorghum your maize your millets wheats are coming from we have what we call proteinous food, things like your soya beans, your beans, and stuff like that. We have what we call the animal food, like, like uh, things like other sorts of meat, apart from your breast milk, egg, fish, meat, and all that. Then we have the vegetables, the fruits, and then water. Now, what we're advocating when you are mixing food is to mix from these different sources. Don't just miss maize and wheat and you are still giving basically something from the same food source. You, and then of course, I forgot the oil. We need things like palm oil or even your normal vegetable oil. So mix, if possible, at least four from when you are mixing food, bring four from the different classes. Now in that first six to eight months, your baby is trying, you are trying to know what your baby can take or not take. So preferably do one at a time. So if you do one cereal, you can add breast milk to it. You can buy formula and add it to it. But don't forget that your baby should need to keep on breastfeeding. Now, if your baby is already taking that one, you can try another one. And you, if you don't want to miss it at that point, so you, you already know that baby is safe with one and it's not going to react to that. And now, so when you're adding the second one, if your baby starts having rashes or something, then you know that that baby is not tolerating that one, you quickly take it out. But if at the beginning you had everything, you will never know when your baby is reacting. You will never know which one your baby is reacting to. So it's better to, to do that. And that is very, very important. So we are not saying don't mix the food. We are saying do it gradually. We are saying do it from various classes. So I would prefer you do a cereal, maybe maize uh, or ghee or something like that. Then add crayfish. That is from the animal sauce. Then if you want to blend banana into it as well, then add milk. That is a more balanced, adequate, complementary feed, which is fine for your baby to eat than for you to just add maize and wheat mm -hmm. and sorghum. Mm -hmm. And all of them are cereals. So where is the baby getting the protein? Where is the baby? And then a little oil. Palm oil will give you vitamin A, will also give you uh, calories as well. So it's better to have at least four on each plate rather than uh, just only one class of food. Okay. Wow, that, that's so brilliant. Thank you so much, Dr. Bimshala, for that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that has clarified so many things. What you're saying is yeah. mix and make sure the food is balanced. Wow, I, I think that's yes. Good. So, yeah, well, we try to avoid the word balance because mothers also goes <laughs> to another issue. But we are trying to make sure it's adequate, different food from different classes, and it doesn't have to be all at the same time. In other words, you don't have to give the same thing morning, afternoon, and night. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can give cereal with a, 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 a particular kind of protein mixture now. Okay. In, in the second one may not necessarily be that same combination you can do another so i'll rather let's say you do the maize and the uh, the crayfish and the palm oil and milk this time around the next time you can do banana mash you know maybe with uh uh maybe soya bean this time around or something else another source of protein you know things like that be, be creative be you know sometimes mothers are you know you want your baby to take pap 24 hours i mean you yourself can you eat rice morning afternoon and i want to be tired so why do we expect our baby to take pap 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 24 7 it's not right so that's it we're having some questions uh, coming yeah, up yeah. Vera. let me just quickly take them uh, yeah. so, uh elizabeth is asking doctor can you please work out the weekly timetable for six to nine month old baby so uh elizabeth i've already said that please go to the facebook group because we can't keep repeating and we try to give you freedom of choice six to nine months old you are your own your own combination we try to do six to eight months then nine to eleven months so six to eight months should take two to three times food a day plus one healthy snack with 
breast milk the same way the baby was taking it, not reducing the quantity of breast milk, okay? So that's what your baby should take. But what you really need to do is those two, three snacks, and if it, that, those, I mean, those two, three feeds, I mean, it should be like half a cup. So what you now need to decide for yourself is what goes into it. So I can't say for your own baby, only give purple. No, you know what your baby likes. You you work it out and try. And be an adventurous, try varieties, and that is, that's the most important thing. And then uh, Ingo Z is asking, how many times should a child of two years old eat? So we are recommending four to five times a day, plus two healthy snacks. And that one is like, there's a place, <laughs> there's a like a, 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 a three quarter to a full place three to four three to i mean four to five times a day in addition to two elder snacks okay. so and and snacks remember from fruits. two years fruits vegetables mm -hmm. you can take things like carrot you can take things like oil health you can take things like uh, para you can you know things that baby can hold in their hands and eat and they don't see it as a big thing so it is not only when they are sitting down and then uh, you are all, you know, all the paraphernalia of food and all, uh, oh, this is a meal time. No, in between so like the meal times, playing. you can give. Yeah, so they are going on, they are eating their banana and moving. They are going, they are eating the purple, or they are going, they are eating their carrot, things like that. From two years, we want your baby to be on the family diet. They should be on family, full family diet. True. So that's the time they should be eating with their spoons. Not you still forcing or feeding them on porridge or on cereals and things. I see mothers who still give their baby bottles at uh, at three years. Mm. They are going to nursery with the bottles. That is completely absolutely wrong. And and those things start from six months. We always say no bottles at all. Even even exclusive breastfeeding, no bottles. Even if you are expressing breast milk, cup feeding is better because it gives them they start learning how to use the cup. They start learning how to use the spoon right from that period when you are introducing series no bottle no series in bottle with spoon and the cup and then you feed them by the time they're about one year you start letting them feel themselves by then they're about nine to eleven months you start giving them um the, the finger food they can hold it in their hand and it is by the time they're about one year two years they can feel themselves and that is how it should be okay. i think we missed out a question before now <laughs> i don't know whether we can go back that we've not answered yeah can i have potato vegetables meals and uh what's the other part meals together she's asking if she can add potato, so baby of vegetables yes Tara, Tara, your baby can eat anything that's the, that's the message we are passing up your baby can eat anything just when you are introducing new food be patient don't be in a hurry do it gradually so the first time you are having something new if your baby just take only two or three spoons, that is fine. Leave it and move on. Don't force the baby either. Because that is where mothers get the impression oh, my baby doesn't like that food and they take that one out. And it's because, number one, you've not even tried long enough. The fact that you gave me something new today and I take only one spoon does not mean I will not take five spoons the next time. So mothers will tell me, oh, I've tried this, I've tried that. I'll, in a, in, a, in a period of one week, they've tried several things. I'm like, that, that's not possible. That means you are, you are, you are really not patient. Yeah. You must at least try a new food for up to like one week, two weeks before you can say that uh, he, the baby doesn't like it. And of course, we have thousands of choices. So that's another message I want mothers to take away from today's presentation. Your baby can eat anything apart from honey, no honey before the age of one year. Okay, so so don't give why. honey to I'm your sure baby. Wants to know why, Dr. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, ACP people know. In fact, yes. botulism, um, honey contains. Yes. Okay. Honey contains what we call clostridium botulinum. So, and we adults can handle it, but babies cannot handle it, and it can lead to a very fatal disease called in fact botulism. So, no honey. Don't use honey to sweeten the pap. Don't use honey to sweeten the cereal. No, 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 no. Please don't. Give other healthy choices. But every other, maybe can take a mala, even from that six months, just make it soft. Then maybe not add the vegetables of a way to add the crayfish from the protein. You know, you know, we are we are from different places, we all eat different kind of food. And that is why when people say I should give them a time table, I'm not going to give you that. I'm just going to give you options. You know what maybe is in your own area. 
some people they don't eat tamala maybe there's something else they like as their own staple but basically we all have all this so and i love the one tara said so she mentioned potato she mentioned vegetables she mentioned meat so she has covered almost three then what she needs to do is to add a little oil and she a, a baby's food is adequate because everything is there and the oil is just a little not plenty like that so the, 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 the if you if you have if you look at the food place you can go to atp or go on google look for food place it will give you an idea of how the portioning should be of how much of the grains and energy building food and how much of the oil, how much of the vegetables, and how much of the protein. And of course, milk. The babies in the first two years of life needs milk. You said that you are giving breast milk, or you are also having formula, because I know some, babies, some people are not breastfeeding. If you are not breastfeeding at all, your baby, the frequency of your baby's food will increase by one compared to all the other people that we've been, the other frequency that we've been given here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you, Dr. Boyede. I, I think I saw a question pop up now. Someone was asking, yes, Ruth, Joseph wants to know. Yeah, ten months old. I think I've said that several times. Yeah, Ruth, your baby, your ten months can take oats. Yeah, can take oats. Yeah. Now, Uche, thank you so much for that question. Uche, Anikwe, Agbafe, is it good to give babies multivitamin for them to eat? Now, the question is, multivitamins don't make your baby eat. Just take that meat away. It doesn't make them eat. So, if your baby is eating the way I've enumerated, taking food from all the various classes, your vitamins come from vegetables and fruits. So, if you are giving fruits, vegetables as your healthy snacks, or even into your, you know, nothing stops you from being creative when you are making your cereal. You can blend apple, you can blend banana into a pap and all that. You understand? So, you can take that. And you don't need any multivitamins. But if you are one of those mothers that the only thing you are giving your baby is pap, 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 and nothing else, then your baby needs multivitamins because your baby is not getting vitamins from fruits and fr from vegetables. But you know what? Giving it as um, the food is far better than giving it as drugs. But if that's your alternative, well, you can do that. You can give multivitamin tablets or or syrup and all that, but we prefer you give it in your food and also give it food. But the multivitamin is not what's going to make your baby eat, it is yeah. <laughs> it is following all these principles that we've been talking about. All right, Thank then you so much, somebody Bailey. just asked a question on uh, body I just okay, Dr. Bailey, are you there? I'm there. Before we take that question, let's just have um, a commercial break. All right, drink it every time. That's why I drink pink for five, six. Pink for five, six, yeah. I want to be strong. I want to be smart. Drink it every time. That's why I drink pink for five, six. Pink for five, six, yeah. I want to For nearly 20 years, Afravite has been my family's choice of multivitamin supplement for the children. When I was a young girl, my mother gave me Afravite because it's rich in vitamins crucial in the growth of children and for their daily vitality. Afravite now comes in a new pack but retains the same goodness that helps to keep the family strong and healthy. Afrobite, available in syrup and drops for daily vitality. Afrobite is made by Afrochem Limited. Yeah, welcome back. Um, Dr. Boyede, we have loads of questions, so we would like to take them sharp, 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 sharp. Okay. Someone is asking, um, Antonia Nwora, is Golden Month safe for infant less than three years? This is our very... No, uh -huh. I mean... <laughs> I'm sure Vera is aware of that. We've debated this several times, and we don't want to advertise uh, for, for the manufacturers, but they've said that the, the product is made for children three years and above. So that is what the manufacturer recommends. Yeah. There's another question. And somebody say, yeah. Okay, Chuku Juliet. Okay, Chuku Juliet. Yeah. My baby is eight days old and um, exclusively best breastfeeding. But it doesn't get enough breast milk. My husband is suggesting formula and water. 
Juliet, how do you know your baby is not getting enough breast milk? How do you know? So the question is, what is are you lactating? If you're not lactating, it's a different thing. We know how to advise you on how to lactate. Please, believe me, your baby can get enough breast milk. Twins can be exclusively breastfed. So if you have a single baby, you can breastfeed your baby. Number one, don't be under pressure. And please tell your husband, I hope he's listening to me. Please, daddy, our baby needs only breast milk. No formula, no water. And your baby's, your mom, the, your wife's breast is milk, is the best for your baby. I mean, I keep saying that which other animals or which other species gets, I mean, God doesn't come to human beings and take our milk to feed their babies. So why do we have to go to the animals to take their milk to feed our own babies? And then we wonder later why our, you know, let's not go in there. Anyway, basically, breast milk is enough. So, uh, Juliet, I will recommend you go and watch the breastfeeding units of cereals. So there's a series on attachment, making sure you are properly positioning your breast. There's a there's a on um, uh, there's a unit on how to increase your breast milk production because I can't go into all the details now. You know we have to answer that question. But I would strongly recommend you watching all the breastfeeding video series. And I, I I can assure you, you can breastfeed your baby exclusively. Yeah. Okay. There's another question. Oh, someone is um, saying, when you give the child the food and they keep dropping it, she says she's forced to just feed herself. Wow. Does that mean I'm not helping the to child? To feed it? She says, Why are you feeding? Are you feeding, feeding yourself or <laughs> the baby? <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, Tina, I've already said you need to be patient. When you offer a particular food, the baby doesn't take it two, three times, leave it and move on then another time you can bring back that food again and do that another thing you can do there are other techniques you can do you can add what the babe, the food the baby likes you can add it to the one it doesn't like okay, okay. so you can add formula for example like you can add your breast baby. milk yes you can that's we call it uh you know packing the food into it so there are some okay. children that don't like all the peas all the fruits and all that you can blend it and put it inside their oats or pap that they love and put the milk. And they are, so they are eating their veggies without seeing it. And that is the most important thing. <laughs> so there are techniques. So I would recommend also for you to watch, for China to watch the unit two of infants and child nutrition on our Facebook group. You will see how to go about that. But please be patient. Please be persistent. Mothers, I found out that we are always, always in a hurry. You want your baby to be eating like an adult when you are just starting something new. They are, it's new to them. So please give them time. Be, be creative. Be adventurous. Try different things. Don't do only one thing and say, oh, my baby is not eating. Okay, and, Dr. And Dr. Come let's and... take Adirogba's question now. Yeah. Hello, doctor. Please oh, Adirogba. Adirogba. Yeah. She says, um, he likes I can read the adult food, but even at that, yeah. he doesn't eat much, just like five tiny spoons of rice. Yes. So, Adirogba, uh, Mujida, I think that must be your first name. So, what we are saying is that your baby's stomach is not like yours. So, your baby is not going to eat the same quantity of rice like you. So, you may think that that five spoons of rice is not enough. It may be more, for a one-year-old, that may be enough. Seriously, all you need to do for us is to make sure that you also, in that rice, it should not be plain rice because rice is just a carbohydrate. Make sure you put a little bit of fish. Put a little bit of oil in your, maybe it's as the stew or something. And make sure that maybe if you want to cut carrots into it or you want to put some veggies or something like that, put it inside that rice. I'm, I'm telling you, that is enough for your baby. Your baby take, so that's what we call making the each, 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 each intake or each spoon count. So wow. even though your baby is taking five spoons, but it is packed. There's oil inside, there's veggies, there's protein. But at the end of the day, the baby has gotten enough. And remember, they are going to eat more, more times than you. That is why your one month old is going to eat four times. And it's also going to take two snacks. Because we know that they can't eat a whole bowl of rice at once. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Five spoons is okay. But remember that baby is going to eat five times. And it's still going to also take snacks. So that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's another question from Theresa Osarinoma. Good morning, doctor. I don't know why my son refuses to eat when I put food in his mouth. He spits it back. 
Yeah, so Teresa, obviously you are just joining us because I answered our question several times. If you are still having this issue with babies at two years, obviously the problem starting from six months because there are what we call eddy eating habits. I think sometimes we have, you know, we, we didn't get it right at the beginning, but you can see, you can see starts from where you are right now. And basically what I'm trying to say is that be patient. If your baby doesn't like a particular food, don't force them to eat it. You are actually going to reinforce them not eating that food anymore. So just leave them. I uh, trust me, children don't starve. They don't starve. To, they will not starve. They will eat. Number two, give them food only when they are hungry. You see, some mothers they want their children to be eating like every second. I mean, who does that? Even you, you don't eat every second. So wait until they are hungry. Wait until they give you feeding cues that oh they are really hungry then they offer them the food at that time but if you already offer them the food before they are hungry they are more likely going to reject it anyway and please just like also some babies because you've given them all those junks they don't want to eat the elder food and so also make sure that all the junks in your house you've cleared them out no biscuits no ice cream no you know the usual stuff of junks nothing of that nature then leave your baby alone when they are hungry they will eat if they don't like a particular one give them other options have different options of food and, and you know they'll be fine all right thank oh, you now yeah yeah let me just say now yes question quickly i've already said it from six months your baby can eat any food so your baby can eat rice it can eat beans it can eat fish it can eat egg <clears throat> it can take water from six months what we are saying is that the consistency and not food i don't know what your last part of the food cream milk at six months, your baby should be on your breast milk, not artificial milk, not the one you drink, not the kind of meat you drink. It should be the normal breast milk. If you are not doing breast milk, you can use formula that is age appropriate. So make sure it is a six month to a 12 month old formula, not uh, your full cream uh, adult milk. You know what? I hope you get what I'm saying, you know. So that's very, very important. But the most important thing for you is that make sure it is the consistency is right. So if you are going to give rice to a six-month-old baby, it has to be cooked, very soft, and mashed, and possibly put it so that it will be like a porridge. That's the one we're saying. The consistency has to be a porridge-like. It's until they're about 11 months, one year, then they can start eating the grains, you know. That's what we're saying. So when you are starting, make sure it is soft. Make sure it is something they can easily swallow. That's the most important thing. But they can eat anything. That's you, like your, your like your egg. You can't give them the boiled egg to eat. You have to match it out. Okay. You can okay. match it into the rice and uh, the kind of Let's move on to Abiodun's question. Can you please take that? Yeah. Abiodun say, uh, is it, it what the right measurement? So, uh, for a sushi breastfed baby, Abiodun, I mean, you are not very specific with your question. You didn't give me the you didn't give me the age of the baby. Baby on exclusive breastfeeding should be on breast milk on demand. So there's no limit to what they can take. Let them just keep drinking it. We don't measure it as much as they want you, you can give. So, but usually we go by their weight. So usually once give them something like about 200 to 150 mils per kg, but that, that's what pediatricians to do the calculator. But for you as a mother, just give them breast milk only. Okay. So um the Next Ibera. question is about uh, Ibera says, is it good that the concluding part, yes, of course, the concluding part of breast milk, what we call the eight hind milk. I want to be smart, drink it every time. That's why I drink it for five, six, it for five, six, ten. For nearly 20 years, Afravite has been my family's choice of multivitamin supplement for the children. When I was a young girl, my mother gave me Afrovite because it's rich in vitamins crucial in the growth of children and for their daily vitality. Afrovite now comes in a new pack but retains the same goodness that helps to keep the family strong and healthy. Afrovite Available in syrup and drops for daily vitality. Afrovite is made by Afrochem Limited. Okay, welcome back. Okay. I'm sorry about that. We had a bit of um, I think so our the we have just five going. minutes to round off this show. Round up. Um, yeah. Okay, like so it is obvious. Yeah, no, we can't take more questions. It's obvious.
return all the questions on yeah, the so just round oh, so what I'm to suggest is that if you still have more questions that doesn't mean we saw your question but can you also ask the Facebook group don't post it on the comments please post it as a suggestion so that we know them our moderators will attend to them because we may not be able to go through all the comments to be able to answer just one on one and please before you ask questions I would strongly recommend you go and visit the units on breastfeeding and the units on infant and child nutrition because most likely with your questions we provide will be answered already. If after watching those uh, videos, going through all the various articles on the on the on the units and you still have questions, we'll be very happy to answer them. But please ask a new question separately on the group so that we can quickly see them and answer. It's been a pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you so much for joining. We All appreciate right. Thank you so much, Dr. Bo Dr. Boyede. That was really, really brilliant. And thank you, viewers, for watching. And I'll just leave you with this few words. Dr. Boyede has told us to go slow when you're feeding your baby. Uh, multi multivitamins don't make baby eat, so make your baby eat. Um, children don't starve. She said that also. And she says, make each intake count. So it means make sure you have balanced meals for your children. So we'll meet um, next time. Please remember to always um, ensure that your baby is well fed. Thank you so much. If you have any question, like she said, go on the um, Ask the Pediatrician's Facebook group wall and drop your questions. They'll be very happy to attend to them. Thank you. Bye-bye. I want to be strong. I want to be smart. Drink it every time. That's why I drink it for five, six. To be strong, I want to be smart. Drink it every time. That's why I drink it for five, six, eight, four, four, six, For nearly twenty years. Afravite has been my family's choice of multivitamin supplement for the children. When I was a young girl, my mother gave me Afravite because it's rich in vitamins crucial in the growth of children and for their daily vitality. Afravite now comes in a new pack but retains the same goodness that helps to keep the family strong and healthy. Afrobite, available in syrup and drops for daily vitality.